austere darkening ground. You've endured so patiently the walls we've built. Please give the cities one more and grant the churches and the cloisters too. And those that labor, maybe you let their work crip them for another five hours or seven before you become a forest again and the water and the widening wilderness. In that arm of inconceivable terror when you take back your name from all things. Just give me a little more time. I just need a little more time because I am going to love the things as no one has taught to love them until they're real and worthy. Hi everyone, Antonio Martin and me, Paula, are here today as representatives for the Impossible Future Collective, which is a big group of collaborators, and we have been invited by the world around us to tell you about us. We think that beyond the environmental, economic and social crisis, we face a crisis of imagination. And right now, envisioning a world without garbage, violence or poverty seems almost impossible. COVID-19 makes it even more difficult to be confident and hopeful. We are a collective of animators, illustrators and filmmakers that are working all around the world to create a series of short films and illustrated texts that help us envision an optimistic future. Despite the fact that there are thousands of movements and millions of people who work every day to build an alternative to consumerism, the vast majority of the media, politicians and economists continue to insist that the markets have to grow at any cost. These new ideas and alternative solutions must be spread urgently. And animation is a great tool to explain concepts and to actually encourage the use of imagination. It is not just about the information, but about giving more room to our emotions. The desire to change the world is not only generated with information. That desire is very linked to emotions such as hope and optimism. That is why we want to tell a story. It's a story with characters and fables that take place on the planet in transition we want to live in. Animation is a great tool to tell stories, but there is a rawness, a reality that is also important to show. It is not the same to see the Amazon being cut down in a drawing than in a video. And this also applies to optimism. It is not the same to see an organic garden on the roof of an illustrated building than to see it come true. And that's why we decided to put together a mixed aesthetic with realistic background and illustrated characters or other elements. So uh, the impossible future intends to see the world as a living organism where we share knowledge and cooperate with each other. Actually, this is why we decided to put our content free online and to produce it with the voluntary work of people all around the world. The Impossible Future is a collective documentary that we are making in chapters with a lot of people around the world. If you do animation, post-production, dedicate yourself to graphic or audiovisual production, or simply think that you can help us, contact us to join the team. I always imagined that revolutions were armed and hostile. I never imagined that I would try to be part of one by making drawings, animations and music. But here we are. We really hope our animations will help us all to expand our imagination in an optimistic way. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. When I was a child, the world was nothing like it is today. I remember that you would go to a supermarket and they would sell you a tangerine without the peel separated into pieces on a plastic tray. Food, in general, came covered with chemicals and wrapped in trash. And almost everything worked with oil, gas and coal. 
scientists said that the global climate was going to collapse and there were only a few years left to save ourselves. But multinational corporations still controlled democracy so that nothing changed and economists continued to be obsessed with economic growth at all costs. It seemed like we were heading towards an apocalyptic future. My generation started to rise up in 2018. We only had a few years to change the system and our way of life, but the climate rebellion had already begun. Millions of people have taken to the streets to demand immediate agreement. Global actions are putting pressure on the G20. President Ocasio-Cortez announces the Green New Deal is passed. As of last month, China has been operating on 100% renewable energy. All will be shut down before next year. All of this seemed impossible, but giving up was not an option.